we we here we see people in Africa, we see them that they are they, they don't know they are better than us here because we are suffering, but we just hide it. Me, I, I can say, like an Nigerian say, Europe now secret society. When you come, you, you to go back is very hard. It is very hard for you to leave your secret society because you, then you start seeing in the TV, ah, now Africa is very hard. Though. That's what you see. Guys, I welcome you live on SBTV Africa. My name is DJ Nyame. If you just chance on our channel, uh, make sure you like it, share, and tap on subscribe if you are new. Uh, if you want to come on my show, to my numbers are on the screen. Just WhatsApp me or send me a voice note. Don't call. Just WhatsApp me or send me a voice note. Daily also Worldwide is a segment that we talk to Africans uh, across the world. Uh -huh. So wherever you are, if you want to join the show, it's simple. Tell us about your hustling, where you're from, your culture, I mean, what you've seen there, the lifestyle and all that. We're trying to learn from uh, people and all that. So if you want to come on, like I said, you can just uh, link up. Today, I'm going straight to uh, Germany to go and have a chat with one, uh, our brother, who is a Nigerian. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask him more things about uh, we're back in Nigeria, expectation abroad and what he has seen and all that. But before I start, start up saying if you are in U UK, if you are in um, Europe, you are in Canada or US, download tap tap send on your Play Store and App Store. Tap tap send app is used to send money to those who are in Ghana, those in abroad. If you want to send money to a family, a friend in Ghana, download tap tap send and then uh, when you ask for promo code, type SVTV. That's it. Let's go have a chat with uh, Daniel. Uh, Daniel, welcome to live on SVTV. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me in the show. Nice one, nice one, nice one. Almost half hour now. <laughs> Everything good. Everything good. Everything good. Everything good. Yeah. Nice one. Your name is Daniel what? Daniel Oko. Danny Oko. Yes. Okay. 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 Dan okay. okay. Danny yes. Oko. Okay. Yes. Which part of Germany are you? I'm in Hamburg. Oh, Hamburg. Hamburg, yeah. do you have Hamburg? We have a lot of Ghanaians there. Do you have a lot of Nigerians there too? In Hamburg, yeah, we have yeah, we have more of Ghanaians than the Nigerians here. Oh, okay. Okay. So, which place do you have more Nigerians in Germany? Um, I think uh, in Dusseldorf we have more Nigerians. In um, Duisburg, there are more Nigerians. In uh, Dortmund, there are more Nigerians too. Yeah, mm. yeah. But H Hamburg is like capital city of for for, for Ghanaians. They are like okay. everywhere you go. Oh, okay. Like, so you have Ghanaian friends? Yes, I do. Oh, okay. I see. Anyway, we'll come to that. How long have you been um, in Germany since we left Nigeria? Um, I've been in Germany for nine years now. Oh, nine years. Wow. Well done. Okay, we'll come back to Germany. Let's come back to Nigeria. Uh, start from the Which part of Nigeria are you from? Growing up, uh, what were you doing nine years ago in Nigeria? I mean, let's get to know you. All right. Um, I, I was born in Abuja and... Um, um, my school in Abuja as well, and I'm from Delta State, the oil region, which everybody knows. Mm. And um, um, after my studies, um, I, I, I'm O level holder. I finished mm. uh, mm. secondary school, and with more, with more expectation of mm. the better life and stuff, you know. So I, I started, I started working um, with uh, a security company in Nigeria. Um, I think I, I did it for like a two months. It's like, okay, this is not my kind of thing because it's, I need more, you know? So I started um, hustling, like buying phones from the streets, you know, from buying phones. I started, as I engaged in buying cars, started selling cars. And mm. that was that was what I was doing before I left Nigeria. Oh, I see. But uh, going, I mean, what, what, what was the plan? Uh, going to school O level and all that, what was the plan? I mean, what um, kind of thing that you want to do and all that, your profession or all that? Tell us. You know, every African Af African dream is when you finish school, you have a better life. Like, you, then you start getting everything you want, you know. So my expectation was go to school, have a better job, you know. And um, actually, I went to um, technical school. So I was in um, BNC department, which is building and construction. Building, building and construction, okay. Yeah, so that was what I was doing and planning to go to university but i was too stubborn the book was not going in 
So I, I, I left. <laughs> yeah. So I did my did you did you choose the did you choose the course yourself, or maybe they suggested to you, or maybe uh, through friends or something because your friend is doing B and C. Okay, I also want to do B and C and all that. No, I didn't. It's not from a friend. It's from um, it's like a, a hobby because. I have an uncle who was a, a, um, a builder as well. So sometimes I used to follow him. He'd be like, Daniel, come follow me to the site and we just go. So he, I see the way he, he does it, but he's, he's more in a local way than the, the big way, you know? So I wanted to like learn it like professionally so I can get mm. contract and do the thing the bigger mm. way and live mm. the kind of life I want. So it was my own decision and what I wanted to, to do. Okay. So after the school, why did you continue with your uncle? Um, after um, uh, my uncle, then I, I I started doing my own school thing. But when I finished um, my secondary school, that was when I was planning to go to university, which I, mm. I used my jam and other things. So that was the point I started having friends like, yo, come Europe, or everything day for Europe. What did they do for that side? <laughs> you strong, you smart, you, you they do this kind of street business for Nigeria. Mm. Get mm. mm. you know? So that's ginger meal, like, ah, okay school you can wait let me go that side and see how it looks like yeah. how yeah, was the street know. hustling like it was sweet it was mm. like it was if you have one if you have one million naira, one million naira, it's it's for you you don't pay tax on one million naira. you don't pay like nigerian money one million naira. you do not pay tax you don't owe anybody everything comes mm. to your pocket mm. you can decide what you want to do and how you want to do it so it's like mm. easy something to do Buy mm. and sell, buy and sell. It was very easy. Wow. Let's talk about your family. I mean, how many siblings you have and all that? Um, I have five, five um, siblings. Yes, mm. with me, six of us. Yeah. So like, mm. like three boys and three girls in the family. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. What about your parents? Were you staying with them? Yeah, I was. I before I was living with them. Mom mm. and dad. Mom, my dad is um, and he worked with um ICC, and my mom like she's a full time. A businesswoman, she she go to the north mm. buy mm. Um, this fufu, you know fufu, mm. Mm. Goes there and buy and bring it to to um, Abuja and, and sell it in in trucks like that. Mm. Mm. Good business. So what? So when your friends told you that uh, Oibo is good, Obodo Oibo is good, Charlie, my brother, come to Europe and all that. Then what happened? It's like you know when they tell you this thing, it's like you mm. you are going to heaven. You are seeing pictures. Mm. You are watching. You know, you watch movies, you say, ah, Charlie, see, see life, oh. And you mm. know, when we watch when we watch these things in the movie, you think like, ah, if mm. I go there, the, the way you see it in the movie, that is the way you follow and you get everything you want. So for mm. me, it's like a big, a big opportunity for me to explode and go and mm. be who I want to be with a lot of wow. wow. But you are making money in your business. So when they told you that you make it more in Obodo Ibu abroad, they said, no, I have to leave my business and travel. Offer. <laughs> You know, they, they, they say is uh, the, the more you look, the less you see. So I wanted, you know, when they tell you these things, you, nobody will tell you that uh, we don't even like mm. this. They will tell you the sweet mm. part that you want to hear. Mm. So when you come, you see it yourself and you say, ah, okay, now, like they said, um, life experience is the bigger teacher. You can experience mm. it yourself. You see now mm. that uh, mm. this one, something the inside the way I don't understand it. <laughs> so how do you get the opportunity? Is it like um, you have your family members there already or maybe how do you do it? Did you hustle to, or maybe some people, they, they go by road, some people to go by air. So let me ask you. Now, for me, it was by, I went by road, which this is a secret. My mom didn't know about it, you know. Ah. Um, she didn't know, yeah, it was a secret. She, but later on, later on, I, I, I told her, that was two years ago. Before I, I explained things to her, she didn't. Know wow. She gave me, she gave me the money to travel, and yo, I started meeting friends, and I chopped money rich half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When you con when you convince your mom that you want to travel to abroad, and she gave you money, yes, and then and then you chop the money. I chop half, half of the money. <laughs> How much did she give you? How much did she give you? Um, then it's not um, like the visa thing and everything is almost um, 1.2 million naira. Then with with your oh, ticket, and yeah, with the agent, mm. everything was like bring 1.2. Mm. Then you were, mm. you were you come to Europe. So that was the amount you gave me. Wow, 
Wow, okay. So tell us about your road. Then what happened? You chopped the money and then uh, actually, me, I finish. I chop after yeah. When mom gave me the money, I, I started flexing the money, you know, chopping money. Where I, so I'm I, along the along the line because I, I already know a friend who was telling me about let's travel by road because he went there before. So I think he has issues, so he, he couldn't cross to Italy, so he came back to Nigeria. Mm. Because the, mm. his money was finished, so he met him in the club where we were enjoying. He was like, "Man, let's go to Europe. You can follow it by this, by this." I was like, "Ah, this one, I, then mm. I have not eat. I have not eat the money to have. I just start. Mm. Let me just go to club and and pass time and enjoy." So when he, he told me that, I was like, "Ah," he was like, "It's not too much money. Just with your three hundred thousand, you can get to anywhere you are going." Ah, I said, "Me, I have more than enough. Let me okay. Let me chop some more." Then enjoy before then I enter the, the road and go and see how it is. <laughs> okay, so uh, through Libya, so tell us about it because I know uh, I've had a chat with a lot of people and they are saying that it's not it's, it's not a, like easy road, easy journey, easy trip and all that. I mean, a dangerous trip to pass through the desert and all that. Let's hear from your side, your experience to Libya. Uh, my, for me, for me, I was living like a king. And there's no stress for me. Oh, it's, like a king because you have the money. I didn't suffer. I didn't know what, like, many people know what, how Libya eats, and some of them even go to ghetto and stay in the ghetto. For me, I was like a chief. They were, they were like, convoy what was waiting for me to pick me up from the beginning of my journey in, in, in Libya. Go to the house, I was relaxing, everything was there. I didn't suffer. Is it, is it because you have friends there already, or how, how, how did you do that? Okay, um, uh, it, it wasn't that I have a friend, I have um a friend that knows a friend um so he like ah i get sister for here you know and you she can help you you understand so and that's one i i think i met him in in our way going to libya you know so he was like ah okay then let's come together let, let's go to my sister's place mm. you see and his, his sister was she was a big business woman then so i i link up with him and we go there together wow so yeah. how many were you when you were going? You were two, eh? You were just and your me, friend. And, me and my friend, yeah. So when we, we went to the desert and we become we become three. So it's like you know this one, then you know this one. So we like we become three friends and we left. Oh, because I, 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 a lot of people say they pack them in the in the, in the in the big truck and all that. What about that experience? Uh, yeah, for me it's true. What's but for my own experience was not in the truck. It was like uh, the four by four van, the Hilos van. Okay, so, the real one, yeah. Yeah, so we are like we are like 20 people, I think, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. 20 people mm. in the so we have more space inside, you know. Yeah, so it wasn't the the chunk type that was okay. So when you got to um uh, I mean to Libya and all that, tell us more. Yeah, when I went when I when I got to Libya, so this my friend sister have a very big house and she was dealing with a lot of things, you know, like most girls used to do the the business you know the street hustle and their uh, the things so he linked me up and because me i get this i'm a nigerian papa i get this vibe like yo what thing they happen what thing if you do what thing they happen for here you know so it was easy for me like the sister even she even liked my vibe more than the brother you see so for me it was like very easy so she linked me up and okay can i get you a job if you want to if you want to work so i was like in Libya, if you're if you're if you're learning a, a trade or learning a job, that they, they are paying you. Yeah, so so I started learning how to fix cars like this um, uh, automobile. I was fixing the Kickstarter, the alternator, the lights, the battery, and all these things. So I was doing that, and I was still doing the side side hustle. So for me, it was easy to balance. So the plan was uh, going to Libya to cross to Italy. Yes. But you got to Libya and you have to do something small before. So once yes. you were there, your target was to 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 cross the sea, right? That's right. Exactly. So so how long were you how long were you there? Um I spent almost eight eight months in Libya. It was more it was because you know I didn't suffer, so it was more comfortable for me. It it got to a point that I even started thinking like ah, let me all relax here, you know. So, but because of the thing in my head, like the more I see the movies, I want to go there. Because my friend, like, ah, Charlie, they waste time. Oh, come here, come here. 
So I was like, ah, okay then, let me still put this in. Once in a while, I'll still keep in touch with him. He like, will the waste time come? So that was how the routine was in and out before I decided to pack out and go finally. Well, let's talk about crossing to, uh, um, I mean, uh, to Italy from Libya. Your experience, because I know it's not easy seeing the sea and all that and being in the, you say you were, you were like a king, they were treating you like a king, but a king that you are going to join the balloon boat. Yes. You bomb is just scared or something. I mean, tell us that experience. Um, the for the travel from it from Libya to Italy for me again it was not it was not stressful because I didn't take the balloon I took the normal okay. the fisherman boat the big boat the, the, the oh. people that, a lot of people travel by that they know what I'm talking about so okay. some travel with the, the balloon while some travel with the big ship with the wooden boat so I used that one to travel so for me oh, okay. it was not stress. Is it because you have uh, you have money on you? Maybe you paid a lot of money or something. And before joining even the boat, you always get scared. I mean, what was running through your mind and all that? Um, because people go through that thing and they die and all that. So, yes, um, you know, if if you have made up your mind, there is something someone told me when in the days I know we were coming, like. You anything anybody tell you, no believe them will put your mind for where you go. Because if some people want to make you scared, and it was like, if you want to make success, there must be obstacle. So sometimes I can meet some people like, man, me, I want to go and I want to go to Italy. They're like, eh, you, you want to die? You know that kind of they want to scare you. So if that thought of that, my friend, like, ah, they want to distract you, then I'll just like maintain my cool and start keeping my things secret. So that one was like, I'm not scared because I know where I'm going, you know. And it was not, it, it was not, it wasn't an opportunity. It wasn't like uh, because I paid too much money, but it was an opportunity. I just got opportunity to join the big boat and I I joined them. How many were you? Um, I think we are in the boat 100 and, 130 people. Okay, mm -hmm. I see. So, how many days it took you guys to, to be rescued? Um, it, it wasn't, it, 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 it's not even up to a day. Because we left um, two o'clock in the mid in the midnight, like Africa, two o'clock in the midnight, and we got rescued um, eleven o'clock in the morning. In the next morning, yes, because it was a oh, big okay. boat, so they can see us, and the connection was very easy. Okay, so when you got rescued, let's hear from the from Italy. Yeah, so and it, we got rescued from like the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. We got. Because I was close to the captain, because the captain had the, the um, um, compass and everything, so you know if they see you, they can connect you and like how many how many people are in the board, how many children, how many pregnant women and stuff and stuff. So I was hearing how the captain mm. was communicating mm. with them. So that was when mm. I knew that okay, we have gotten a rescue, you know. So the the control us and like okay, calm down, we're gonna be fine. Right now we 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 are gonna come to you because they were very far. We're going to come closer and put you inside the big boat. So that that took that took like it took like um two to two hours for them to bring us from the the wooden boat to the main big ship. So I think from there it was like it was history. We joined wow. them and they started taking care of us. Okay, so when you go to Italy, definitely they will take you to a camp and all that. Mm, that and... was when the that was when the nightmare started. You know, that uh, the the Europe dream. You think like okay. I want to see everything now. Your eye open, you started seeing everything you want to see. <laughs> so when we, the moment we reached Italy, I started seeing boys. Everybody's fresh, but you know, like you started like oh, thank God, this this one is my dream. You know, you started seeing fine you boo Boroni girls. You see their men. You see everybody equal. Life is easy. You know, so we went to the camp. They took blood tests. They give us some injections for bacteria mm. and stuff. Give mm. us bed. Give us room, mm. started eating mm. us food, you know. Mm. From there, they transferred to another camp. From there, they, they took us to like a living, normal living house where mm. I think we, we mm. were like um, four or five of us in the, in the house. So they gave us the house, we were staying there. So from there, you can start processing your docu documentation and stuff mm. and stuff. Yeah. But here's the case there's no conflict in Nigeria. So you have to tell them a story. So what happened? Somebody did tell them. 
Because they ask you questions. They will take you to court now. You have to say something. Your reason why sure. you came there. Sure. You know, definitely, where we were living, nobody tell us, ah, go look for stories, you will one thing, you know. Yeah, that's why I said that, that is when the nightmare starts, the stress. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, they tell you, ah, okay, now you have to tell us the reason why you left home. And if, if it's because of economic um, crisis, then everywhere have economic crisis, so you don't have asylum here. So you have to give us like concrete evidence of either they are chasing you or they want to kill you, like it's life and death. Uh -huh. so you have to create you have to create any story to tell them. <laughs> Did you pass your test? Um I know no, I know they failed some people. I was failed too. I was failed because my my story was the first time was complicated, so they have to verify a lot of things. So I couldn't stay to the second verification I left. Oh, you left? Oh, that means you left the camp. Yes, I left Italy. I think I spent I spent uh, uh, one year, three months in the camp. So it was like it was like hell. I started feeling like I, it's like I'm in a trap, you know. They detect they detect what you eat, where you go, what time to come back. You know, everything's like now they are choosing your life for you instead of you choosing your own life. So I felt not comfortable, and I even see that there, there was no um nobody to in, encourage you to be like. Ah, I see this black man, he's, he had a car. I can be like him. I see that they are suffering. You know, that there, there was no job. You know, you see, like your black people, like you ask somebody, how long have you been here? He tell you 10 years. Even you that you just came here, if you see yourself, you're even better than him. So I that that's gives me like, ah, something is wrong here. I'm not kind of comfortable here. So I have to leave. So I left the Italy. So, so all this while, what did you tell your family? I mean, your mom and all that you told them you're traveling right because she gave you yes. the money so maybe she she was thinking maybe you, you are in, in obodo ibo so what did you tell them you know um because my mom she's not the kind of international somebody when i went when mm. i reached libya, when i reached libya i i you know i called her with a foreign number so she was like eh, you know so like you don't reach you don't reach so i, I because i know someday it's gonna it's gonna bust because my, my brother was very smart so when I think when my brother saw the number, they were like, "No, this one will be Yankee number. Or this is an African number." So he called me. He was like, <laughs> "He was like, where are you?" So I was like, "I have to to forge something." I was like, "We have problems, so we have to transit here," you know. So that was the I just manipulated them and let them to just feel like I'm okay. And I, I keep calling them to give them, like, give them um, update about me. But they didn't. Mm. Uh, this one now uh, ain't just from Lib Nigeria. Go Libya. So it's like you went there, then you transit, you have issues, then you have to leave. So it was like that. Mm. What about when you got to Italy? You were giving them updates. So when you got to Italy too, because that one you called them with a good number. I, what, I think, no, my mom was the first person I called. When I called her, she was like, she called my brother, verify this number. Because she was feeling me. Yeah, because uh, you, you took too long, you know? You took too long. I, when I called, she wasn't happy, like, ah, thank God, you know? Because she didn't, she didn't know where I was. Because for me, I was happy mm -hmm. like I passed through this. Anymore. But she was like, uh -uh. "Nah, I give you money to take the flight." So normally, mm -hmm. you just you come down from the airport, carry your bag, you start fresh life. Uh -huh. you know? uh -huh. Like yo, Alpha, this number is a very good number. So my brother, he, he checked it. Was like, "Yes, this one an Italian uh -huh. number. This is the food." And she was like, "Ah, mm -hmm. okay, finally, the orange." That was mm -hmm. how I beat them with that one. Oh, I see. So, um, um, when you made up your mind to leave the camp, I mean, uh, that was when you moved to Germany, right? Yes, yes. But it's not easy to move because you don't have, um, they've not given you any permit and everything like that. Did they give you any permit or anything? So, how did you move to Germany? I didn't have no documentation whatsoever. Only what I was having was um, my insurance card, you know, so... Um, for me, Papa, I can say I have this spirit of I can like um, hook up with people, you know. Because when, when I entered the, the, the train from Italy to Germany, even the person that we were sitting together, like they they they, they, they bring they bring him, they arrested, they bring him down. But there are these there were these um, um, South American guys and one black guy with them. So when I see them, I like I go I, I like I, I put my shirt and I wear t shirt. I go and join them. So it's like we are families that like we are traveling together. So we mm. so when the controller came, they come, they can control from your body language, like 
this one is different because you start seeing that you are different, you know. So I tried to meet with them. So when they came, they just asked me for for my traveling ticket. I just showed them the pass. And the other guy was shaking in the next seat. They just see him, they say, stand up. Your traveling ticket, he showed them, they say, your papers and stuff you, you didn't have, you have to go down with them. Wow. But before before going to Germany, I mean, uh, do you know anybody there? I mean, was there any community family, friend, or anybody there that you decided to go to Germany? No. Because I know there are so many countries around, but you choose to go to Germany. Why? No, no friends, no family members, no really, nobody. I didn't know nobody. It was mm. like one soldier for me. Wow. Yeah. Okay, when you go to Germany, let's hear from there. Since you don't know anybody there. Oof. When I went, when I, I, I landed in, in Munich, so from, from the Munich um, train station, the police came normally because they want to start controlling. They know that that, um, that was when a lot of migrants were, were coming to the country and they're checking. So when they see, they know that if they see you with a bag and you look so different, they know that, yeah, okay, you are among the migrants. You know, so they just bring me down and like, okay, join these people, join these people. From there, they started giving us a, like the normal tag, you know, the, with the number. From there, they took us to the car. A lot of people, they came, they, they make documentation for you. I think we spent there um, like seven days. From there, they bring ticket and paper, like, okay, you have, they have to transfer you to another region. Mm. Mm. So that, that, was, that was from there. They, they took me to another region from there, from the region. Then they gave me a normal, uh, like the Aduro house, you know, the house with a lot of people. Mm. So that, was, that was when I started my life and I, I started living with the Aduro people in the house. Wow. So how, how, how long, I mean, how many months or how many years do you spend at Aduro, Aduro fee? Since you are saying Aduro, that means you understand some of our language, yeah? <laughs> I, have, I have Ghanaian friends around me. So um, I think I, I spent uh, almost four to five years in Aduro house. Four to five years. Wow. Yes. Four to five years. Yeah. Were you free going out and all that coming in? Were you doing any work or something? Yes, for, for, for three years. Because when when I came, it, you have to stay, um, it was a law, you have to stay for thirteen months before you can get a working permit. So for me I have to stay that thirteen months before I have a working permit. Mm. So mm. I think I spent like two years doing nothing and the rest other years I started working. So I think I worked for like for three years. Mm. Yeah, wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So tell us after moving from um, uh, a Drufi, what happened? What next? Um, Life. That, I mean, in Germany, your expectation, you want to go to Obudo Ibu. You don't enter Obudo Ibu now. Hard we? So now tell us more about Germany. You've been there for nine years. <laughs> you know what? That was when I, before I left uh, Aduro, I started like, I started getting tired of the situation. When I even start mm -hmm. seeing my friends in Africa, I see that they are even better than me. Mm. Yes, I can see you can, you started getting depressed. You started losing your style, your own dreams. You, you don't, you cannot even find your dream anymore. It's like you are, you are helping the, 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 the your boss to achieve his mm. dream. Because mm. he's using, he's paying you for, for his own service and for mm. what he's giving. So you just help him get his, his gold. Why you, you are just being the, the workman, the workman there. So for me, it was it was very hard. I started feeling like, ah, what is really going on? This is not the life I, this is not what I plan. It's like, you go to work, you come back, you sleep. You go to work, you come back, you sleep. You know, and if you want the jammers, they are they are not very very social with people. They want their mm. space. They don't want. Mm. They don't know. They don't know you. You won't try mm. to. You won't force yourself to be their friend, and it's very hard. So for me. That five years were like it was like hell. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So after the five years, are you okay now? The, after the five years, I, I started like I have to leave this place. You know, I have to go, I have to go outside the world and, and mingle with the real people. Because like as yo, me mean a hot guy now before I, what thing they happen, what is all this going to work, go and sleep and chop and go to work mm. and come, you know. So definitely you have to start hanging out with getting new friends and getting new contacts and when i started speaking to them they were like man five years you spent for Aduro house why Aduro house if you come two years one year you stay there you come out you come big city you start living normal life and you hook up with people so then i started when i come out i see people like they are living better fresh life 
So that that was when I decided, like, no, me, I have to leave this place. So I started moving mm. to press. And I hope mm. I press outside. Mm, mm. Yeah. Okay, um, 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 most of the youth, I mean, African um, youth, they want to travel. They want to come to Ibo. We mm. see it in video like TV, as you said. But you, do you see opportunities in Africa? I'm okay, since we are in Nigeria, let me just use Nigeria. I know most of the youth, people will DM you, people will ask you, I want to come there, I want to travel, I want to do all those things. What are you telling them? Offer. The, they say, if you read the if you read the Bible, the Bible say um, when God created the heaven and earth, He created Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Mm. Me, me and you know the Garden of Eden. They have lions, they have tigers, they have leopard, they have audio animals. And when you check these things, you see that Africa is the real Garden of Eden. So here, anything you see here is like fake. They fake everything here. Papa, I tell you truth, child, offer. Everything you see here now fake. You see a very rich, a rich man in Africa. He come here, become poor man. It's there. You can see. You have, you have, you go, to, you finish university. You come, you come here. You are washing toilets. You cannot wash toilet in Africa with your, with your. That is that kind of job. You say, ah, for my my own status, I can't do that kind of job. But here you are now because you want the the the, the money. Then you do all kind of work because you want to keep, you want to get that money and you change it to your country. It's a big money. A lot of people they have you can see someone can sell his family land, sell his business, he's living comfortable. And you want to come to Budu, you want to come to you want to come here. At the end of the day, you get depressed, you see that ah, what you're expecting is not what you're seeing. A lot of people are of some people are regretting 99% of diasporas. I can beat my hand in the chest and tell you they have depression. Mm. 99%, then almost. 99% .9 of diasporas. The one that don't have depression is the one that they, they born them here. You see, they have they are suffering from depression. So if you think that, ah, if you want to come, come and see for yourself, you confirm what I'm telling you. Maybe you say, ah, and everybody gets your own luck. You can come one year, you, you have everything, you can hook up. My friend, the, the race is the same thing. The bill is the same thing. The stress is the same thing. The social mm. life is the same thing. So don't be deceived. If you if you have your business you are doing, child offer. A man that is driving trotro is better than someone that is staying here. I can give you an example. A man that is driving trotro come out from his house. His wife is waiting for me. Nobody stressing for nothing. If you have if you have one thousand cities, that one thousand cities now you own. You only buy fuel. You, you pay rent. For one year, they don't pay rent for one month. Here, you pay rent one every month. You pay rent. How many homeless people we have in Africa? How many? How many you see sleeping in the streets? For here, they have all the whole big houses, but yet, if you don't, if you cannot pay the bills, you end up in the streets. It's very easy. You live with your neighbor for two years. You don't even see your neighbor with the eyes, with your eyes. But in Africa, Papa, just come out from your from your house. You meet your neighbor. Ah, give me money. Give me salt. How are you? How are your family? These things keeps a man, keep a woman being happy. You don't. We don't know what is depression in Africa. Now we come here. You see, you started expressing depression. Where did depression come from? Because you want to keep. You want to. If you don't. If you don't keep to expectation, you lose everything. You come back. It's like it's like this. Like. Even the people you want to impress, they don't even, they don't even care about you. Hmm. We we here we see people in Africa, we see them that they are they, they don't know they are better than us here because we are suffering, but we just hide it. Me, I, I can say, like an Nigerian say, Europe now secret society. When you come, you, you to go back is very hard. It is very hard for you to leave your secret society because you, then you start seeing in the TV, ah, now Africa is very hard. Though. That's what you see. You cannot. People there, they, they, somebody doesn't have up to one million cities or like one million naira. He's he's living the best life. He's very happy. Sometimes you don't have to cook food. Just come back from work. Your neighbor, ah, my, uh, uh, uh. you call uh, Nana. You have God in the house. Yes, yeah, so two, two, before you know, two of you will enjoy. But here, yeah, you can even die inside your house. Nobody will know. So why, why, I understand you. So the problem is, you know, most of the youth, our problem is job. Hmm. 
You see, the reason why they want, we want to travel the job and also the salary. So yeah, what do you think? Well, all what you are saying is true. I know it's true. But a job, if we have a job to do and we are getting something small, small, why should I have to worry myself to travel and go and stay there? Oh, fine. The truth is, if we, if Africans are putting the same energy they are, they are putting here, Africa will be better. You have jobs for yourself. Can you imagine somebody working three jobs here? Just and the, at the end of the day, there are some kind of jobs that them themselves they, 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 don't, they don't do it. They give it to black people to do it. If I'm in Africa, because of my experience now, I can meet two, three people. Yo, I have this business experience. I have this little money. What can we do? Check Bigate or Bigate, they call him. Microscope, he still it. That is not he's not the owner of his he stole it from somebody. You see, so if if two, three Afri Nigerians or Africans or two Nigerian and Ghanaian guys come together, I have this little money, I have this little money. What can we do for ourselves? Let's set up a business. Before you mm. use, you start employing a lot of people. The, the truth is why you see that we Africans are getting poorer and we, we, we suffer more, we work more because here you work, you work more, they give you the money. That money is not up to anything to buy here. But when you change that money to your country, it's, it's like this. Then that gives you comfortable, like, ah, me, I be a big man, no. but the real truth, you are suffering. But if you are a big man, you are staying there, you change the money into your local currency, and you are there. So it's your family or somebody that will enjoy that sweat. You, you, you make that. But when you money. come, you just spend three weeks, one month. Then you go, we have to go back. People put up buildings and all that. They give themselves pressure. They have to work hard and put out properties and all that. But they don't come in and live here. They'll go back. My so uh, it's a real right to focus too much back home. It is 100% better. It is 100% better. The life is easy. Your family members are there. Relations are there. Friends, if you have problems today, you, you fall before you, you work out two, three, you get solution for yourself. Mm. Mm. But so, sometimes Africa, people are like, ah, I don't want to worry anybody. I want to pray to God. God, please help me. That is why you see some people are suffering like that. If you come out and like, ah, offer, I have this issue. You see, they start, how, how can we help you? How can we do this? How can we do that? For me, I think Africa, there is more opportunity. If, it, if there is no more opportunity, why did from, they go there and take from there and bring here? That is the main the main paradise. The main they, they are coming. They are coming back more to invest in Africa. They are coming back. So they, are they, coming the, main back paradise is, the main paradise is Africa, not here. Yeah, everything, Papa, I tell you, everything here is fake. That we everybody is faking. You, you can imagine somebody just don't be deceived. Somebody just just go to uh, uh, the coffee shop. He just take a photo. He buy coffee two two euro fifty cents and he post. You see, like ah, see my friend, my friend. That he only buy the coffee two euro fifty cents. You think that he he's one of the shop. Your mind will not go to that coffee. You think ah, see see life, see fresh thing. But you there, you are more even better than him. Because you are the, nothing like peace of mind, nothing like freedom. The biggest thing a woman being can can lose is when you when you lose your freedom. Which we don't which freedom we have here. We have no freedom. We are suffering. Like you say, you want to let me make let me impress this, let me impress that. After you walk, you same, same somebody will say all these things that you are saying. The person will say you are right, but the person will say, Why are you still there? That is if, like you want to come, if you want to come there. <laughs> oh, that's why I tell you like, it's, it's a secret society. When you come <laughs> to leave is very hard. When you come. As I'm talking out, if anybody that's watching now, you be like, ah, me, I want to come. Then let me see. Come and see for yourself, my friend. You can come maybe after two years, three years, you make it. But my friend, it's the same stress you go through. It's the same races you go through. The same deal you pay. If you mess up, you lose your house, you go back to the streets. The same neighbors, you think that they are, they are their neighbors. They don't even care about you. They don't even know you. They are living their own life. But uh, our people too say, I'm in my country. I'm trying all means, it's not working, and I'm suffering. Then let me go to somebody's country and suffer. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's like you're it's trade and butter. Let me, let me trade my happiness with the money. At the end of the day, uh -huh. you see, 
this money is, is not even that is when you see that money is not everything i'm a i'm a living witness before i came here i was thinking about the money the money now i have the money now my, my happiness is not there my freedom is not there you go to africa mm. you should you see people come if you see papa you see people mm. that come to africa the mm. diaspora you see mm. their faces they don't they don't want to leave they, they are very happy you see they are try, they are very happy but here they tr you struggle to be happy because everybody came to hustle now if you make if you mess up i take your own i have to my own take mm. it to my family mm. so if you see them one they come there one more two more they enjoy they want to enjoy everything and, and when they leave they come back to square one and start suffering i saw one of your videos a phd uh, holder cleaning toilet 100 percent, papa 100 percent if they tell you that you finish university now you want to come and be cleaning toilets you just go and learn how to clean toilets safe don't even pay you school fees just go and learn how to clean toilets so if you come here you eat just eat bank who gets more power if you come here you clean toilets but after you you spend your money you have phd you come here now they tell you my friend this is the toilet that toilet you cannot wash toilet in africa but they, because of the rates, the, the exchange rate, you see, ah, if I change this money for Africa, I'll be a big man. Then, the, that money, if they say you should spend that same money they give you in here, it's, it doesn't work nothing. You cannot buy anything with that money. But back home, that rate keeps you, and you're like, ah, okay, me, I'll be a big man. Let me stay and keep working. The more you work, the more you're, you're, you, you, you lose, you downgrade yourself. You have no freedom. Danny, Danny, are you married now to Ibo? Yes. You're no, married no, to, to Ibo? To, no, to a Nigerian woman. Oh, a Nigerian woman. Oh, okay. Nice one. You have kids now, eh? I have a son. Oh, a I see. Son. Nice one. So why do the women kick their men out in uh, winter time? Hey, Papa. Hey. <laughs> you know, anything I post in my, in my, in my page is uh, experience. I don't just go and write and prove. So, I want, to, so yeah. I want to know your experience. You were kicked out before, eh? Winter time. Hey! Hey, let's see how saying uh, it's like, it's like uh, this hero woman they, 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 they choose winter time to chase you out. If you do that, anything they like, let me watch you. Winter, they come, you will hear out, but he will tell you, they leave you. <laughs> My experience, I then I was dating a Boroni woman, you know, so we we have issues. She was like, Ah, Charlie, you, you is like that was then, like, Ah, you. It's like you are you are looking for something from me. Me, I know like I know too. I, I'm scared of you. You are too, you know, your vibe, everything you want to do, you want to impress me, you want to impress me. So she's like, I'm sorry, this relationship cannot hold. Let's everybody go away. I see no problem. Then you say everything. Go me. I I delete your number. I delete your your num your your number from my phone and your, your your name. After two days, she called me. She's like, I'm sorry. You're the best man. Forgive me. I don't know what came, came come over me. Can you come to my mm -hmm. house weekend? Me, I went to her house weekend. I didn't remember because you say you are not doing a game, so I didn't remember to even to write your name back in my in my list. So I leave it mm. like that because happened. When I got to her house, I took a photo of her and her friend. We we're just having house parties, so I took a photo. She's so like, ah, I, sh I showed her. She was like, ah, this picture is very beautiful. Send it to me. So now when, when I want to send the picture to her, so she said that I didn't save her number. She was like, you know these people, they are crazy. Oh. Sorry for my language. She was like, so you don't, you do not even save my number. You, have, you have already deleted my, my, my number, your phone. That means you do not even love me in the first place. I say you broke up with me. You say you don't want it again. The next thing I see, ah, it was in Feb February. February is very cold now. She said, my God, please leave my house. It's two o'clock. Um, I said, I'm, very, I'm telling you, two. He said, leave at last. Ah, Please let me sleep the next morning. I leave. She said, You cannot sleep, you have to go. I started pleading, begging her friend, her friend, like, okay, let me talk to her. She has to beg her. This thing I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, I'm already outside the door begging. Because I see the code is too much. Where I come from is very far. I have to plead. For she allow me, I slept in the coach the next morning. She, she was one attack me. Oh, yo, it's time. You leave. Anybody, Papa, you are in Africa, Alpha. No African woman can do that to you in Africa. It's not possible. So for me, it's like, what is the freedom? You, it's like you're waiting for winter. When I have issue with you, then we go out. And the more, it's like the more, 
you lo you lose yourself to make them happy because they feel like ah you are looking for the papers. Even though you even though you you truly love them, you truly no not no no pretense. You truly love this person, but they see because you don't have this documentation. You need this paper. Anything you do, they're like ah this thing this guy is too he's too caring. He's too lovely. He's something. He's looking for something you new. Know, and their friends that can sit there then. I ah, think I'm easy. This boy is too showing too much love. Maybe if you have something from you, you run away. I know the women have powers there than the men. Mm, that one that we all know. So, uh, I mean, a lot of things, they do a lot of things. Most of them do a lot of things that um, some of the men complain. They kick the men out, as you are saying, and all that. Yeah. But why is the divorce rate high? I know divorce rate is everywhere, but uh, let me also take it from your side. The divorce rate high in abroad, especially in Europe. Offer in Africa, no woman will get benefit from nobody. Uh, the man, the man pay, the man pay the rent. He went, he go to work and feed you. So when you say that you are independent woman, let me use this for example. When a man have money, the next thing he's thinking about is to get a beautiful woman. But when a, a woman have money, the next thing she like, I don't need a man. So here is like, if 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 you mess up, I chase you out. I can I'm still independent. The government can take care of my bills. So mm, mm. me, we are living like I'm even doing doing you doing doing you a favor to stay mm. here. You see, so in Africa, if because of she know that if you leave me, if you leave her, nobody will carry you. She with three with four children, five children. When she's only saying selling kinky, and you you are doing a nice job taking care of her. Anything you do, her, she will be here and like ah. Because of my children, because of I know he's a nice man, but he does have small issues. Let me bear it. But here, they don't even, you don't even need to do anything, just a little small argument. They have, you don't even have to have arguments small. They don't even push push the argument so that they know that if you leave, they have the bigger space to gain that you are with them. That is just it here. But is it happening because we have our culture? And since the, the loss, there may be. Uh, supports the women more, and is, is that why most of them are taking advantage of it? You see them single mother, single mother, single father, single mother, single father. Why? Like I said, like I said before, if you leave them, they have more advantage to to get to get everything they want. So that means you do not advise anybody to bring if a man is in like the way you are in Europe, you know you will not maybe bring your wife from Africa to come and join you. It's not advisable. Uh, that one, no, it's I, I can't advise anybody from on that. That one is personal. It's it, it's a it's a it's like a, a lock. You can bring someone that can disappoint you, you can bring someone that she can even you you will build your life together and you'll be like, I think now I'm more happier than before before I'm wasting my time. So this one is like it's it's a lock. You can go to market and buy rubbish, you can go to market and buy good things. That's a solid answer. Okay, let's talk about I mean Nigerian community there, the few ones that you know. How is the communication? Are you helping each other? Unity and all that. Let me hear from you. Um, yes, I think um, we have um, um, one data organization here too. Um, I think once in a while they, they do like this um, six month meeting. If you have issues, you know they can support you. And maybe you lost your house. That one because I, I'm one of them. You know they can support you, pay your rent and stuff and stuff. So, but I think like because here the the Nigerians are not too, the, the, the um, community are not too big. It's like very, very. But do you have this backbiting, pulling down, and all that in among the Nigerians there? Um, this one is not only among the Nigerian community. It's, it's, it's this, as long as you are this. Mm. Let me give you my I'm asking, I'm asking you because I've asked a lot of Ghanaians this question. So because you've been in Nigeria, that's why I'm asking you. Nigeria, but you have generalized that it's our problem. This one, eh? It, it, black man don't want you to, to be more than him. Hmm. Let me give, let me give you an example. This one is not a Nigerian. It's uh, like where I work, I have more Ghanaian colleagues than the, the Nigerian colleagues. When I when I came there, I worked for like five days. The boss saw the way I was. I was like, so, I like putting everybody. Yo, why are you standing? Come on, do this one. Oh, yo. We are getting the same salary. Why do you want to stand and leave me to work? So the man said, like, ah, this one is smart. Too. The next thing, he, he told me to 
uh, supervisor in that same company, that same place. You think these people are happy? The next thing that they say, everybody's well, like, no, 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 if you don't, don't tell me anything. What? Let's share talk to me. You that come yesterday. You see, so this one is not about whether Nigeria is like we. It's our problem. We don't we don't want to see that this one is better than me. This one is I want us either, either to be equal or if you can if I cannot have it, you cannot have it. Let's stay together. So it's like a competition, yeah. We like are competing. Problem. Yeah, yeah. It's a black it's a black black problem for us. So what can we do? Is there any way out? Um, I think um for me, if you if you see if you check the the everybody knows this, I'm gonna say. If you if you see the um, um, Turkey people, they have more cooperation. The Turkey man can, can come to uh, Deutschland in the next in the next six months. He have everything. I'm saying this. Everybody they, knows they that. Are, they are con they are connected. They are one. They, you you can see somebody that you you guys come together. You see him even in the camp. The next six months he's driving Lamborghini. You see it. I'm not I'm not capping what I don't know. He's driving a nice car. They connect. They know the system. They organize themselves very well. Because there are, there are people like, oh, yo, this is how to do it. This is how you can do this. This is how you can do this. You can do this. You can same, do as this. Indian, you can do this. same as Indians and uh, Chinese people. Exactly. But this competition is, we don't have these connections like the, Af the like African people. Like, how can I, I'm eating from here, my brother. Come, let's do this together. Here, Papa, I tell you the truth. You can see a, a sister, a brother can even marry a sister just to give him this this thing. <laughs> I'm telling you, these I know, people, I know. they are like, they are like, yeah, they are like this. A sister and brother, ma mother can even see somebody in the outside and see, this is what happened one time when I was working in one company. The man saw me and he was like, how long have you been here? I told him. He said, do you have all your documents? I said, no. He said, ah. He said, ah, you people are suffering now. He said, I don't have any sister, anybody, any friend to just to, to give me this paper. His paper is nothing there. I said, hey, nobody. He said, them is very easy. Anybody can see anybody from, from their village and you know him. He give him. When I, somebody else come, that person gives somebody else. As but we, 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 Afri we Africans, we don't do that too. We it's a problem. We, we don't. Hey, Papa. African man can you see, you see that, that paper tree that you are talking about. Do you know how they value it? If the, the truth is when we come out, when we come out God for Ibo, the paper be next. Hey, Papa, this paper thing, uh, it's when when you have it, then you know that it's it's, it's stress. The more you that the, the when you have it, then you start getting bills upon you know that okay, they know you now. Anything you to mess up, you get fired. But when they, you don't have it, you have to. You have your free life to do anything you want. What is the what is there? But we will take a black man because of this paper. He can go and he can even color your girlfriend. He can color mm. your wife. Mm. Yeah, because of yeah. Let me get this space. Let me get these documents too. But them they are not like that. If they see they want to help you, they know that they they is their people. They put hands together and support themselves. I think Africans we have that. It's we lack that. Communication and that is it like the upbringing or something? The Indians, yeah, these Indian people, the Indian man can only marry an Indian woman. It's a culture. Anywhere they are, you see that they want to, they want to communicate. Indian man marry an Indian woman. If you want to, if an Indian want to marry somebody else, you be like, you have to be like an Indian man, dress like an Indian man, not you dressing like an Igbo man or a Nigerian person. They want you to dress like them to keep their culture. So for me, this one is like. It's like a difference from Africa. Your mother wants you to be ah, uh, my, uh, my my neighbor's my neighbor's son is a doctor. You have to be a doctor. You see competition now. She don't want you to be yourself. My neighbor's son is a uh, is a, a lawyer. Me, I wanted to come in my mom lawyer. You have to be a lawyer. The competition started. She started getting jealous. You want to be like that instead of uh, what can you do for yourself? If I'm a carpenter, you are a doctor. There's nothing I can come and do a furniture for you in your house and make my money. If my children are sick, you can come and treat them. Say boom. But the competition is like from far home. We start this competition. Let me be better than this. Let me like most of my friends that we went to school together. That they are more smarter and clever than me. I can tell you. 
I can beat my hand in the chest that I can tell you I am more richer than them now. Then they're like, oh, if you don't, if you don't, if you don't take first, you can read and read and read. You want to break your head because you want to read and get this A. What about your own personal? What can you do for yourself? If you're smart, you're smart. What can you do? What what do you have in your brain that you can do and survive than than being? Let me get the A and get get the degrees. At the end of the day, you come here and you're washing toilet. Now you're making money. Danny, thank you so much. I'll bring you again. Thank you so much for coming on my show today. Give shout out to your friends. Uh, well, a lot of people will be watching. So give shout out to your friends, uh, Nigerians and Ghana, everybody. So you people, give shout out to them. Yeah, my your shout fans. out goes to all the Hamburg citizens, all the Nigerians, the Ghanaians. Please, let's, let's put our hands together and support our brothers. If you see your brother going through something, support him. Teach him the mm. way. Show him that if you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. Let's stop the the hate, the I don't know you, you're not from my region, you're not from Nigeria, you're not from Ghana. As long as we have this, come on. We can be better. Thank you. Okay, then your, 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 your social media, your, your social media and the TikTok and all that. If people want to follow you. Um I, my name is um Danioka, Danioka six in, in TikTok. And, uh, and, and Instagram is um, Dan, Daniel Boss. You can follow me there. For me, I, I don't used to do the social media thing. It's just the TikTok. I just go there and express my feeling. And if I see it, if I hear any, any story about someone, I just want to go and drop it and be happy. So I, I don't need too much. That's to, uh, it, Danny. So you can Thank you. Happy. Thank you so much for coming on my show. Eh? Thank you. For nice one. Nice one. Thank you so much for watching. My name is DJ Nyami. Like, share and subscribe for more if you want to come on my show to my numbers are on the screens let's have a chat mm. i'll thank my production team uh dj click sharon and tina make sure you subscribe share to your friends if you have anybody in mind that you want to recommend the person to come on my show my show is not, not only for Ghanaians, so it's just that Ghanaians have dominated the channel but i'll be doing more of uh, african brothers and all that so if you know anybody that wants to come on my show you can just and send a video to him or her. Uh, just recommend the channel to him. That's all. Two up. Hi there. My name is Kale Boss. Hmm? The only boss with one S. Happy new month to all of you. Welcome to a month of new possibilities. Oh. Oh. Do you know why life has been made so easy? It's because of that tap set. People, TapTapSend is here to make your life easy if you want to transfer money to Ghana, if you want to transfer from USA, if you want to transfer from UK, Europe, Canada, a lot of places all to Ghana. And guess what? When it comes to Ghana, there's no e-levy charge. So, what are you waiting for? Download TapTapSend on Google Play Store and App Store and be ready for a sight of us coming your way each time, every time on TapTapSend. Tap, tap, send. Send more, spend less.